update development vlog thingy thing that I have to make this year <clears throat> and it's not without reason Twitch basically changed things in March and I didn't even know they changed somebody came to me and said why are you doing it this way because then the events will never arrive when I go in Diving in deeper into this problem, I figured out that basically Twitch ruined the way we worked with the API. In the end result, the API would break for a lot of features that our plugin is using. The MSG Streamer GUI basically uses all those events to hook onto and communicate with Twitch. So let me shortly explain what happened and what I have done and then I will showcase how the end result is inside the plugin. If you want to skip I will put a time marker on the bottom of the screen on which time you can skip forward to the demonstration of the plugin how it is now. If you are interested in knowing how Twitch does things and what the end result is yeah well stay watching I will try to explain as much as I can. So, in this case, I'm gonna pick some blocks to more easily explain um, how the system works. So let me get some of those, get me some signs. Let me fly towards the, uh, the, the desert for more easy viewing. And let's start by basically looking at how it was. And for that, I'm gonna put some color markers here. Before, you needed a token. This is an access token. This is being used for accessing the events to listen up to uh, Twitch to get a feedback, for example, if somebody follows you or if somebody subscribes to you. Those things are using a token. The server owner would need that token as well as a client ID and a client password. Those three things were the only things needed beside the, the, the official name for the bot. In this case, it's a client name. Um, and those four in combination is how the system worked before. Basically, the plugin send up the client ID to the server together with this client password. And in the end, we will get a token back. That's basically what the server owner did on itself on the web browser to get its token and that way the plugin knows to communicate both ways. What went wrong? Simply it is that now currently Twitch decided to combine a token plus client ID together in order to make a request for a token and also to keep the token. Beside that, it needs a refresh token now. So you're wondering what? Well, basically the old token, this one over here, the purple one, the old one, was never going to expire. It never expired. However, they introduced refreshing from the OF2 protocol. Basically, I, in order to get a token, I need a client ID and a password, those two. Beside the fact that in the first call to make a link, I need a client ID. And then when the streamer authorizes themselves, they will get a special activation key and the plugin can then connect with the token, with the activation token and the client ID to activate the token and get back a refresh token, a normal token and an expiry time in seconds. The expiry time can be reset using the refresh token. It will then generate a new token to use with valid for another four hours. So basically the plugin needed to keep on refreshing every four hours to get the streamer to keep getting events in game without interrupting. This would mean that I have to restart the bot every time somebody's token expired. 
And if I forgot, or the server was offline when it expired, it would cause a lot of shit going on behind each other. So what I currently did is made a system that basically skips all this. I've rewritten the almost the entire system for Streamer GUI. So let's start with the first basics. The server owner only now has uh, only needs a client ID and a client password. These two are the only things needed for the server owner. So server owner client ID plus password. Those are the only things needed. But when he creates the client ID and password, he needs to set a URL. I have made a web API script, especially for NCG Streamer GUI, that basically does this. So more information on how to link it will be set into uh, a later part of this video where I'm going to explain how to do those things. Um, beside the fact, if you take a look at here, they need to create a bot, basically an account on a dev account. They create a client ID and password, and I need to set a return URL to the NCG URL which I show later on in the video. When they completed this and entered it in their plugin and start the plugin up, the plugin is basically working. Most basic features like follower, chat listener, and I believe also the bits API, all are working like they are intended to. However, all the other events from high trains to rates, from, um, from channel redeeming systems to um, polls, for example, they all use the new token system. So what I did is when the streamer comes out, like let me, let me call this one a streamer, they can do a command that basically activates the combination here and will, he, he will get a message from ask to verify. Basically they get a link in game that when they click it, they will be sent to their browser and it will ask them on Twitch for access to the MCG Streamer GUI, or basically the app name that the server owner set when they created an API credential. When they approve, they will get a new command. So in this case, they will get a command. They need to enter that command in the chat in game. And when they do, they are getting authorized. So in this case, They are now authorized, token, refresh token, and expiry are all free collected into the plugin. They are encrypted and then they are saved. Why I did encryption is because normally you do not want to share the tokens as easy as just copy and paste. So I encrypted them. Uh, it's not the most best encryption, but it's at least an encryption to prevent bots and such to know what are the, what's standing there without doing a hard work to get it. Uh, basically, I'm using the system. From this point on, it goes both ways. If it's expired, it goes to the left. If it's valid, it goes to the right. If it expired, then the system will say, okay, refresh it. It will send the refresh token to get a new token. This one will then, in its own way, go back to the right. And if it's on the right, it will activate the listeners. Basically, it will start listening to the topics I have set into the scopes list for the token that you're using. So basically speaking, as soon as somebody validates, they will activate some scopes. They can see the scopes that they are agreeing to on the moment they want to um, approve access to their channel. Those scopes are basically listeners. It allows the bot to listen to those events as well as do certain actions on your channel depending on which scope is entered. Currently, the only thing the bot can modify with the scopes that I've currently put in are polls. 
the bot may create polls, read out polls and remove polls. And that's for a future update because I wanted to build in a poll system where you can make a poll in game and let your viewers vote and such and then a few moments later get the results in game as well. <coughs> Excuse me. So basically, that's the only thing it can modify. All the other scopes are currently basing on read, 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 read. It needs to read all those information in order to do something in game with it. So when those listeners are activated and it expires, basically the plugin gets a signal every 10 minutes to check if it will expire in the next 20 minutes. If it does expire in the next 20 minutes, it sends the refresh again, it unloads all the listeners, basically it disables them for that user, gets a new token and activates the listeners again. So basically there is no interruption in that whole process. And this is all automatically done. The, nobody has to do anything else. The only thing that needs to be done is the server only setting up the correct thing once and a streamer activating itself once as well. There is one exclusion on this system. As soon as you have a token and you're not activating the token or refreshing the token in a long time, longer than like a week, the token becomes invalid. The refresh token also becomes invalid. This means that the streamer needs to reconnect and re-approve to get a new token. The only way to do this safely is by turning off the server and removing the token credentials and expiry from their streamer file and then they get another chance at approving themselves. I have not implemented a command with the reason that it's not safe to do so. If I do it and somebody managed to opt themselves in an advanced way, then they can basically ruin every streamer on the stream and that's not something you want. The good thing also is that as a streamer is leaving a server and they have a token here, they can withdraw the token in their own Twitch account. Basically, they go there, they see the, the, the Twitch app ID that the server owner set, and they just set revoke token, and it's done. The token is not valid anymore, they cannot get into it, and um, no information is being read from the channel anymore. So those are the explanation on what happened and what now happens and what is now implemented. So let's go over another new feature that I implemented before I go over the demonstration. And that's a long requested feature for channel rewards. Any affiliate on the uh, Twitch network can make channel points. They can earn it through watching and can redeem it for basically emojis and custom rewards. But that's where this plugin can now hook into. A server owner can set rewards for custom IDs. Basically, the server owner can add rewards for the streamer with a certain name. When he does that, and that name is entered as a custom reward in Twitch on that channel, they will trigger that reward in basically of commandos. It also supports a custom message that the, the user can itself set. For example, you can uh, add a command that does say, say uh, with the custom tag on it, and then when somebody on the stream has enough points and redeems it, and they can enter a custom message, once it triggers, it triggers in game and sends say and then the message that the user entered on Twitch. Basically, it's a two way communication. So when they re redeem, for example, 100 points for a Apple in game, um, then the server owner can say, uh, I call it the Apple reward. So on the Twitch page, it's in the store, also call it Apple reward. And uh, when they click it, uh, they pay the points on Twitch and it triggers and then the server notice that it triggers. It takes a look, is there a reward with the same ID? Yes. Okay, trigger these commands. So basically it can also hook into existing rewards as long as they are custom um, and the name will be the same for how the admin configured it. 
they can get the rewards. And it can be unlimited commands attached to each reward. It has the placeholder, same for the entire plugin, with one extra for custom input that the um, reward claim viewer thingy thing entered, if it's enabled on the Twitch reward. So now the interaction between the game server itself and the viewers is way bigger. It became way bigger. Beside that, there's one other note to make. Why I did it so that only the owner or app pins can add rewards is because it's a little bit overpowered to run commands in console. And these commands are being running from console. So the only way to add them to the system is basically to be an admin with the correct permissions and being an OP as well. Um, the OP tag is ignored if OP is disabled on the server at all. So then in that case, it will take a look at the permission node um, the, the admin permission out from the streamer GUI. That's why it's important never to give that permission to some standalone user. Okay, now enough uh, chit chat. Let's go on to the demonstration. Let's first take a look at the linking. For this, I'm gonna move out of the game in a few moments, so it can be a little bit switchy between the web page and the other things, but. Let me just take a look. In game, as I'm not verified yet, I say link Twitch. When I do that, I get a message, please verify your channel. When I click this message, I get a little bit of a weird one. It looks weird. It looks crazy. But what it basically says is it's asking for an authorization with a client ID and with a redirect URL, which I just said that the server owner must set. It must set it to the twitchlink.mgsoft.eu slash confirm. And the response type, I ask him for a code so that we can activate it. And the scope is basically what it asks for permission for, like reading the bits, manage polls, reading high trains, reading polls, reading redemption events, those things, reading moderation. Reading subscriptions, only reading, not writing, just reading. When I click yes, and this is where I'm gonna switch screen, so give me a moment. When I clicked that link, I ended up here on this page. It says Twitch link made because I already approved it before. If I didn't approve it, I will get a screen from Twitch itself asking if I would approve it. So if the token ever expires or needs to be remade and they enter the command again, they do not have to unlink that Twitch. They just directly get the command to complete it. When you click it, it will copy it to clipboard. You can also type it over if you want, but it's a bit a little bit of a big command to do so. So let's switch back in game. So I'm back in game now. And now I do the command that I just got. And when I do that, it says you're now authorized, which basically states that I have now authorized this plugin to use my channel to read out information about me, my channel, and the events that occur on the channel. It's not saved, by the way, it's all live. So I can now switch over to the file browser and show what happened. Good. This is the file it generated. By the way, for those who want to steal tokens and such, it's no use at the moment. These tokens are being revoked as soon as this video recording is done. Basically, I have uh, put a little example what happens when you add commands for the um, channel reward system. Basically, you can see CP and then you have my reward, which is basically the name of the custom reward on Twitch. Then you have the say custom input and the did this, by the way, this placeholder, it can change. So please take a look at the docs page for the exact one. Um, but basically this one executes as soon as somebody redeems my reward from Twitch. For the tokens, these are the to tokens you can see here. And those are not the exact tokens, by the way. These were the encrypted versions of the token that um, just generated. Basically it's unreadable for the default I. It's encrypted in the plugin and it's been decrypted in the plugin and it only decrypts it when it's needed and it will never store it anywhere, not even in memory. So yeah, that's that's a thing worth noticing as well as it expires in, which basically states that it will expire like um, 10 past 7 uh, at the end of this day that I'm currently on. 
which currently means that my token is valid for probably let's see four hours and a few minutes so the token expiry time can be a little bit different every time you ask it and then depending on your rank on twitch it can also be longer than four hours the longest that i managed to find online is 24 hours and the shortest one is one hour, depending on how much punishments they already got from abusement. So basically it, it writes down this information and this information keeps on changing every 10 minutes. It will verify if it needs changing, if it does so, it does it again. So this whole system changes continuously. <clears throat> so let's hop back in game, shall we? So when you're back in game, you might think, okay, now I'm verified, what now? Well, basically the same thing as all. You can just manage your control panel um, like it is right now. Currently there is no skin for the point redemption yet, but you can toggle it, same for all the other things. It's um, It does stay configurable by admins, which means it only is set up, set up able by the admins itself but the streamer itself can toggle it off if they want to uh, disable it for the time being and um, all the other buttons are fixed for those who were bugging out a little bit they are working by the way as you can see you can toggle them on or off so you can uh, do whatever you want to do with it for the admins sui Channel points, the streamer's name, in this case I'm uh, M Music, at, and then a reward ID, uh, YT reward, um, and when I press enter, I get to add the command. So in this case, give the player um, iron ingots. 64 and then when I click it OK it will add the reward for YouTube reward in the file for the streamer and when it triggers that same reward it triggers the command and replaces the player name holder with the one triggering it so yeah that's how you add a thing removing is the same but let me just show you what happens when you do the list command you will see which commands are attached to that uh, reward and you can also do remove and it will be removed and if you execute a list when a reward is not there it will say reward unknown so as simple as it is it's easy to manage in game easy to add commands in game and remove commands in game so in the end that's basically it uh, for whatever changed and done and such there is one last thing that I do need to mention. The plugin is no longer usable without a client ID and password. It's no longer usable without the MCG API generating a token for you. There is no manual way to add your own tokens to the system. And this is with reason. Since many tokens have, we have four different types of tokens on Twitch. And if you enter the wrong one, the whole system doesn't know what to do and throws errors in the console on the on a, like a moving uh, walkway. There was no stopping then. And it can corrupt your client ID and password because then it will overrate. The system I use generates the exact correct token with the correct scopes. If you do it manually and try to bypass the system by encoding and decoding and manage to crack how it's being encrypted and decrypted, I don't care. If you do, it's at your own risk. And if you do, it can block you from Twitch forever. Keep that in mind. A developer account of Twitch for the client ID and password is not to toy around with. It's basically made to access the Twitch API on a normal, usable and human matter. Using a different token which does not have the permission for it, the plugin keeps on trying to get the connection. If it cannot make the connection, you will soon hit the rate limit. If it keeps on happening with multiple users, it will crash. And basically you get banned from the API because you overrated too long and too much. 
Beside that, if you ever change your client ID and password, all tokens on your server are invalidated. Keep that in mind, do not change once it's placed. Although, if you come from a version before this one, you can remove and replace your credentials because you need to make one with points to the link. More information on how to set it up, please visit the docs.mcgsoft.eu for an explanation for the admins, how to set it up once and clearly and easy. It's not too hard to do. Thank you all for watching and hopefully I will see you all in the next one. Good luck!